Hi, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this pack video short, we're going to discuss the teams and roles of the PACT projects. PACT is an acronym. It stands for Performance-Based, Accelerated, Customer and Stakeholder-Driven, Training and Development of Any Blend. The PACT processes are best accomplished via participative team meetings where the team is facilitated through the analysis and design and other activities. These teams include subject matter experts and master performers. For decades I have been differentiating between master performers or exemplar performers from subject matter experts. Master performers are doing the job to a level of mastery immediately before they come into this project. Subject matter experts might have done the job years ago, or might be building tools or policies and procedures, or be concerned with compliance, and bring that subject matter expertise into the effort. But master performers bring the mastery of performance, their knowledge and skills and their abilities to do the performance, into the project. However, we must be careful with the use of master performers. Research tells us that up to 70% of what a master performer knows in order to do the performance is at the subconscious level. They don't even know what they know in order to be able to do. That's why we like to use a group forum where we bring master performers who can stimulate the thinking of each other and build on each other and fill in the gaps of each other as we articulate both ideal performance the gaps of ideal performance for the non-master performers and also all the enabling knowledge and skills that are required. These efforts can be accomplished via more traditional individual analysis, interviews, observations, document reviews, but at increased cycle time and costs. These are the teams involved in a curriculum architecture design or modular curriculum development or instructional activity development effort. The project steering team includes the client and all key stakeholders, whoever has a stake in the process of the project and in the outcomes. We are working for them. They own all of the decisions ultimately in a project. They own the business decisions and they own the instructional design decisions that the instructional designers do in the context, in the conduct of a project. The project steering team can reverse any decision that's been made for whatever reason that they have. They live with the consequences of the right or wrong decisions. We are working for them. The analysis team are the master performers and subject matter experts and sometimes novice performers and sometimes management and supervisors of the target audience. They're going to articulate ideal performance, the gaps that exist in the incumbent populations, and all of the enabling knowledge and skills that are required to perform at a level, ideally, at a level of mastery. The design team is a subset of the analysis team if it's not the entire analysis team. What we don't want on a design team are new players at that point, for we find that they will have a tendency to want to re-look at all the analysis data, rename it, reverse some of the things that are articulated in the analysis data, and that becomes quite problematic. I've had a few projects where the design team redid the analysis data during the design team meeting and didn't produce a design. Not a good thing. The implementation plan is unique to a curriculum architecture design project. As a curriculum architecture design project produces no new content, it simply identifies the need, rationalizes existing content against that need, and then prioritizes the gaps. This team prioritizes the gaps and approves the costs and the schedules that are estimated for the acquisition, the development or the acquisition of this content. The development teams are unique to both MCD and IED, the new product development efforts of the PAC processes. 
This would include instructional designer types and master performers and other subject matter experts. Whoever holds the content that needs to be captured into whatever deployment media and mode has been chosen for the instruction. The pilot test team includes two types of pilot participants, target audience representatives, so that we can measure learning. However, target audience representatives cannot reflect on the accuracy, completeness, and appropriateness of the content. They wouldn't know. So we also include management representatives, what I kindly refer to as management spies. They can tell us what was accurate, complete or not, and appropriate or not. However, we cannot use them to measure learning, so we need both types in our pilot testing efforts. The instructional systems design team are the ID folks, the instructional designers or developers. They're going to be doing the analysis, design, and development of all of the content and manage the project from the supply side. There are customer side teams and roles, and there are supply side teams and roles. We need to learn to collaborate to produce worthy instruction and information that will truly enable people to perform because they've learned it prior to the need or in the moment of need, or both. The customer side teams and roles include that project steering team, the analysis team members of master performers and subject matter experts, etc. They're on the design team, the implementation planning team, the development team, and the pilot test participant team. There are two additional teams that might be utilized in a project depending on its risk, its complexity. The analysis team that generates the analysis data might need some follow-up by analysis review teams. These are also master performers, subject matter experts, novice performers, and management and supervisory personnel, and other stakeholders potentially, who need to sit in judgment of the analysis data before it's used in the design. Where we'd like to bring 8 to 12 people together in an analysis team meeting, if the target audience is 30 to 50,000 people, that's too small a sampling for some clients, and this gives them a mechanism in order to conduct a thorough review of the analysis data before it's used in the design. Even though we like to take all of our data to the project steering team and have them review and approve it, it may be beyond their capabilities to review the nuanced details in the analysis data. They may be too far removed too high in the organization from this work activity to really know is it accurate, is it complete, and is it appropriate. So the use of the arts or analysis review teams are helpful to clients when that situation occurs. The same is true at the design team level. Before we actually build out the design, perhaps the client would like to extend the review of the design that was produced by the design team and conduct design review team meetings. I've done many of these where I've taken the analysis data and then later on taken the design data around and shopped it around the country to various regions of the client's organization and reviewed this. We do a design walkthrough or an analysis data walkthrough. We give feedback forms to everybody to capture their feedback in the moment when we did the review. We also give them a window of time in which to mull on it, to reflect on what they saw, and then to give us feedback before we start going into the next step. This has to be carefully planned. This has to be anticipated that the project is going to need this. This needs to be discussed in the first phase of a project as to whether or not we're going to need analysis review teams and design review teams. This is part of the predictability of the PAC processes and anticipating that there may be situations where this is a necessary add-on to a traditional project. The supply side teams and roles include that of the PAC project planner and manager, the analyst, the curriculum architecture design designer, the modular curriculum development and the instructional activity development designers, 
the lead developers, the development team, and the pilot test facilitation team. The lead developer takes the designs and is responsible for ensuring that what gets developed reflects the modularity of the design. Too often I've seen in projects where the design has created a certain modularity so that reuse of the content is more likely at lower cost in the future only to find that the development team did us a big favor and combined things and made it simpler and easier and lost that modularity. Later on the client paid for it when they went to go reuse that content as they would have to extract content when it could have been built in a modular fashion. That's the purpose of the lead developer. They participate in the design efforts so that they understand the design through and through and then they take and lead the development efforts in that phase of the projects. In the pilot test facilitation team, those roles vary depending on what deployment platform and media and mode are going to be used to deploy the content. I've been practicing, publishing, and presenting on these methods since 1982. My recent book, Six Pack, covers all of this in great detail.